play your case and put the DPP in a spot. The DPP must be, must be put in a spot because the DPP is, is, is not a paragon of virtue. And with all of the DPP wearing long, long, long skirts or, or slippy showing or slippy showing in these, in these sexual matters. Yes, um, and you know, it, it's very disturbing. Again, more evidence that the society in which we live is not a um, is not governed by the rule of law. And then they're so passive. I think they put something in, in our water over the years. We're not fighting anymore. Mm -hmm. We're accepting. We're not standing up anymore. We're laying down. Mm -hmm. And these motherfuckers we call our politician, the real criminals and the real crooks, they're having a, they're having a blast. Because there's no check and balance. Check and balance don't come from your cronies. Check and balance come from people who feel the pain. Right. And that's why you see what, like, even in... To, to, ...to prosecute and prosecute him. When the, the act says that you, you should not do that, you should not prosecute, you should not prosecute a whistleblower. The lawyer representing Bascom wrote to the president for him to get for, for um, Bascom to provide protection as catered for in the law. Nothing. At the time, I remember when the first thing the president was traveling, going somewhere, he said, well, he has not seen it. Like, if you got to see it itself, something come to you, you're the president of the country. Wait. So, uh Waiting. Listen, the islands fought, listen, the first island that fought to free us was Haiti. Haiti. And where is Haiti today? Exactly. Even most Caribbean countries who look at Haiti in disgust because they don't see themselves as standing with them, brother, the first nation to fight for free us. And you ask yourself, why is Haiti suffering so much? And why are my Haitians brothers under so much pressure? You know why? Because they stand up against the giant who they should have bowed to. The system caused him um, to do that. So that is what you have. You have a lot of corrupt people. You have a man, senior, senior in the system, I gotta repeat it again, laundering money. And what happens? Nothing. Again, I say, you believe that the US, with all their resources, um, the technological, and the human resources, because they have human resources in Ghana too, you think they don't know all of that? You think they have not compiled some fact? But now our, 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 our indigenous life and our indigenous way of life and our lands are being threatened by the current government administration of Jamaica who seek to bring Chinese and other nationalities into the cockpit region, which is an indigenous secret region to usurp us, the Maroons as the warriors so it's crazy that's happening right now yeah, yes well crazy. it's the indigenous people all across the world around the church, yeah. you know where i'm from peru welcome back to the flight hit that subscription button buddy and stay updated with everything that's trending in guyana and the diaspora thanks so it was successful because ian chang say come before me and tell me why you advise the police that henry green be charged with rape and the DPP couldn't have proved anything and Henry Green was not charged so they had cases where you could you could challenge use the court system go to the high court go to the court and make your case play your case and put the DPP in a spot the DPP must be, must be put in a spot because the DPP is, is, is not a paragon of virtue and with all of the DPP wearing long 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 skirts or, or slippy showing, or slippy showing in these, in these sexual matters? Yes, um, and you know, it, it's very disturbing. Again, more evidence that the society in which we live is not a, um, is not governed by the rule of law. And then they talk about the same thing, some part of the release, in keeping with rule of law. But the, government, the, the people in Guyana, the government don't know anything about the rule of law. If they know anything about the rule of law, I said yesterday, I think it was, that there was there being a credible investigation against the vice president when the vice news story dropped. They would have been, look, and they talk about um, rule of law. Somebody mentioned it some time ago um, about whistleblower. Bascom, Dian Bascom, the sergeant who by uh, the definition is a whistleblower, came out and said that Asruddin Mohammed paid Caesar, the head of the major crime unit, 30 million Guyana dollars to cover up the paper charts murder. That is what he claimed. And they cut the poor arm um, to, to, to prosecute and prosecute him. When the, the act says that you, you should not do that, you should not prosecute, you should not prosecute a whistleblower. The lawyer representing Bascom wrote to the president 
for him to get for, for um, Boscombe to provide it protection as catered for in the law. Nothing. At the time, I remember when the first thing the president was traveling, going somewhere, he said, well, he has not seen it. Like if you got to see it itself, something come to you, you're the president of the country. Wait, so, uh, something as important, if you had considered it important, could you not have called your office to find out if such a doc document is there? Could you not, uh, look, send it to me, WhatsApp it to me or something like that and give um, instructions, but no. And he went and he came back and nothing happened. Nothing. No protection was offered. And then the police, the corrupt police, yeah, they, and, 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 and I'm singling out those corrupt ones, decided they want to go after um, Bascom. So much so, this ridiculous statement by the man in charge of OPR, Beard, when he was cross-examined in one of the matter, and he said that he questioned, uh, he cautioned um, Boston. How did you caution him? He cautioned him over the telephone. That is what the officer in charge of um, of the Office of Professional Responsibility, that is the evidence he gave. That is there. That he cautioned Boston, Boscom, who um, was a suspect in this cybercrime charge. He cautioned him over the telephone comrade you can't believe these things but you know we just bring the facts to you that is what uh, the, the man in charge of um the of opr said he cautioned someone over the telephone it's corruption and here let me tell you this mr conway described or he gave a definition for corruption yesterday when we talk about corruption in the wider sense it does not necessarily mean that you take money from someone, you know. You can have corrupt intent, corrupt actions outside of taking a blight. Let's understand it clearly. So when you are going to give evidence, first of all, you lie, which is not only corruption, but there is a, a, a criminal offense, it's forgery. He followed in the suit of Mark Phillips, the prime minister, who lied in an affidavit, which is forgery. He lied. To say that he cautioned the man, but when he got broccoli in the, in the box, how did you caution him? He never expected that. He never expected that. Where and how, where, where and when did you caution him? He cautioned him over a telephone. So you, you you know we say that when you, first of all you should arrest and then caution. So therefore you arrested him over the telephone as well. He arrested him, and this is the man in charge of the unit. And I know this officer, and I know this is he, this this is. Uh, way below the standard, but the, 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 the system forces people, weak people, to, to, to sell themselves, sell their souls to the devil, and embarrass themselves in this manner. It's a system. Because Beard is not no fool. Beard is supposed to be one of the better um, investigators, better detectives. But that is what he said: is the system caused him um, to do that. So that is what you have. You have a lot of corrupt people. You have a man. Senior, senior in the system, I gotta repeat it again. Laundering money. And what happens? Nothing. Again, I say, you believe that the US, with all their resources, um technological and the human resources, because they have human resources in Ghana too. You think they don't know all of that? You think they have not compiled some file and get it there, waiting for the right time to drop the ammo? Waiting. I I look, let me tell you this. As I've said again, I'm going to repeat, this is huge, this is massive, this sanction business, massive. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. This is only the beginning. And as we say, when these matters are dealt with, they start from the small fries and they work their way up the chain. And if the Mohammeds and May Thomas are considered small fries by the authorities, then you can imagine who are the bigger fries in, in this thing. You use the imagination. Use the imagination. But again, I say sit back and wait. In a little while from now, in Idanchi Makume, it was a big bacchanal just the other day. We did need Anchi Makume. You know the song by now. The mighty juke. The mighty juke. Woman bacchanal. You're going to hear bruise out. But I dare you. But, but I challenge you. I challenge the, 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 the cost man, the abuse note man, to abuse the um, Treasury Department. I dare you to abuse them. Well, let me listen to hear 
what is going to be said uh, later about this matter. In particular, this gold smuggling, this sanction matter. Let me hear what is going to be said. Because again, this is unprecedented. So a lot of people in and out of government, business community and all of them, trying, I, I suspect many of them by now would have gone to lawyers to get legal advice as to uh, how they should proceed. Those who perhaps were in business with the Mormons, who do business, whether they buy gold or sell gold or buy, buy foreign currency or sell foreign currency to the uh, Mormon, anyone in the enterprises. I sure by this morning or perhaps since yesterday, they would have gone to get legal advice to find out how they should proceed. And I hope that the legal advice they get is good advice, not ram goat advice. I, I like what the um the ex FBI agent said about the Mohammeds. He said, "Oh, these people are ethical people, honorable people, right?" And, and this man that was employed by the Guyana Embassy in Washington, I mentioned it yesterday. The Guyana Embassy in Washington contracted with a private investigator to actually clear the names of the Mohammeds. Because they couldn't get visa, and the man, of course, uh, who, who, they, who, um, he who pays the piper called the chul. So the man draw them. I know how much he draw them, but the man come and say, "Oh, these people are being wrongly and falsely accused. They are good people. They are not involved in any unethical or criminal activity." Blah 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 blah. He go on. So I wonder what he's saying now. I wonder what he is saying now. And again, I say. Things like this should be investigated. How is it that Guyanese taxpayers' money is spent by the, 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 uh, the embassy in Washington to investigate on behalf of a private citizen? Because remember, this is not an investigator, investigation to determine where, um, whether he should be criminally charged. Well, it's an investigation to clear his name so that he can be eligible for a visa, a U.S. visa. The Guyana government to the embassy in Washington did that. Samines is the man in charge of the embassy there. Samines in charge of the embassy. Somebody said we're still waiting and sue. We are going to come. Because what's going to happen? Let me tell you as a race the matter. Let me tell you, crystal ball, and not only crystal ball, is the knowledge and what we call intelligent anticipation. Because they said that eventually, Sue was served with the court documents. They did not say that he was served in person. So he might have served by some other means. They said Sue was served. Now, if Sue was served and Sue fails to appear in court, the persons representing Barrett Jack Dew are going to move for default judgment. Remember, the default judgment was granted against him in the Annett Ferguson case. So they're going to move for default judgment. And if no appearance or if no defense is um, uh, uh, is offered by Sue and his legal representative, they're going to get default judgment. He asks a $20 million. They might very well get the $20 million. And if you're involved in all of these things with the assets for Sue has and all of these, when you talk about 500000 um, US dollars to one contract, $20 million and nothing for him to be paid, he might, then he might even, even pursue it. They might not even pursue the 20 million. They just want to make a statement that we sue him because he lied and we get 20 uh, million dollars. You got to read how these things are going. A lot of these things is just for theater, just for optics that we sue because he lied and and then it fizzles out. It comes out of our um, focus and it fizzles. You got to try and understand what is going on. And that is why we come here on speaking out and we explain these things to you we enlighten you we teach you about how the system works and um what you can expect that is what goes on now let me bring mr conway for his closing remarks and then um we're gonna uh, take our leave for today cc your closing remarks please all right just, just to get back to sue you know i'm barat um and sometimes we say you gotta take it with a, a whole bucket of salt because all he said, Sue was served full stop, you know, nothing more. Sue was served. I know we served it or when, and just Sue was served. Anyway, we, we'll have to continue the, the discussion because sure by by time we reach again, other issues going to 
going to emerge or or more more players might, might be made public so we're going to keep this on the front burner and deal with it as it unfolds yeah folks we, we are not going to leave you um with greetings welcome back to the channel we all just heard what the top cops had to say about the corruption going on in guyana and when will it end one person that you're supposed to go to for some form of help you can't even go to her because she's ruling on cases that she's one not supposed to rule on she's not ruling on them properly there is no checks and balance when it comes to the guyana judicial system everyone is doing what they want everyone's doing what they want as well for a particular price allegedly because it's said that certain people are getting paid, allegedly certain people are getting paid to give particular rulings on particular cases to go in favor of a particular person, allegedly. And is the type of place that, hey, you can get stuff done if you know somebody, if you pay somebody. This is the only way sometimes where you get anything done in the country, which is very sad. There should be some checks and balances going on in the country. And on top of checks and balances, we have Mr. Buju Banton exposing the corruption going on in the Caribbean. And that there are no checks and balances when it comes to politicians and the money that they take and the certain implications that they're doing and how they're bringing people into the country to loot their land and they're not getting any of the benefits when these big contractors are coming into the country and taking out their natural resource companies are coming into particular countries and taking out their natural resources and they're not compensating the people oh people are gonna stay in Poverty if they can't support themselves. A bojo is a maroon word. A maroon, maroon, no. Maroon, maroon are some of the indigenous warriors on my island. We fought the British. A bojo is a maroon word, British, relentlessly. Those are the Moors? Maroons are from, we're called Black Moors, but my generation yeah. originated from Nigeria. I'm, I'm mm. an Ibu man, according to my bloodline. All right. And we fought the British relentlessly. Mm -hmm. We fought King Charles for 40 years, and according to the British Treaty, anybody sustain a war over 80 years automatically win them sovereignty. So we fought him for 40 years and call a ceasefire, and when he bought in duty, we fought him for 40 years after that. Why? So we tricked them into fighting for 80 years without cessation, and we won our sovereignty from the British. Wow. Yeah, wow. and um, we ruled from the cockpit country. Mm -hmm down to the um, the Clarendon. But now our, 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 our indigenous life and our indigenous way of life and our lands are being threatened by the current government administration of Jamaica who seek to bring Chinese and other nationalities into the cockpit region, which is an indigenous secret region to usurp us, the Maroons, as the warriors, so it's crazy that's happening right now. Yes, yeah, well, crazy. it's indigenous people all across the world around actually. Yeah. You know, where I'm from, Peru, because the multinational Sikhs people who don't have phones, they don't people, have yeah. they, they have, but all the right. multinational Sikh, the national the, the resources of the land, like in the cockpit country of Jamaica, we're rich in bauxite. Right now, there's certain companies like Naranda and certain Russian companies who have been taking this bauxite for over 70 years and they will destroy your school. Right. Just to take the backside under the school. But there's no payment given to the community, nor the chief, nor the council of the indigenous community. It's done through the government structure where these people are just totally alienated. Deals. And their land is being pilfered. Right. Like, you know, it's crazy. So it's a new generation of young men rising up. What's the two political parties that you make? I don't give a fuck about political parties. <laughs> <laughs> That should be one of the political parties. <laughs> you, know, you know, because, you see, it's two sides of the same kind. Yeah, absolutely. We hope for change and we, we, we hope say, but you have to understand that a country is basically a corporation which an elected official as a CEO. Mm. Yep. A lot of people think 
a prime minister run a country, but you have to understand that these motherfuckers are CEO of the company called the country. And it's the mm. board. And they are board members. So they, are, they, are, they have to answer. Right. Sometimes these board members are so powerful that these assholes shit in their pants when they get a phone call from these motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that in the Caribbean, we cannot improve our standard of living for our people. And as a disaster, I'm going to run going up, begging left, right, and center. And these are the same motherfuckers who have came into politics with $3,000 in their bank account, US, and leaving politics with 600,000 million. Million, yeah. So where this, where this month millions come from? But the Caribbean people are so passive. I think they put something in, in our water over the years. We're not fighting anymore. Mm. We're accepting. We're not standing up anymore. We're laying down. Right. And these motherfuckers we call our politicians, the real criminals and the real crooks, they're having, a, they're having a blast. Because there's no check and balance. Check and balance don't come from your cronies. Check and balance come from people who feel the pain. Right. And that's why you see what, like even in Kenya, they were taken aback. They didn't know that the young men and the young women of Kenya had their ducks so much in a row that they could tell each politician what they owned and where they live mm. and where the investments were that shook them. So we realize that, you know, in the region, we have to do better as the leaders. We stop, we need to stop elect people based on their skin color and them being charming. It should be on your mandate. Mm. And we have to hold your feet to the fire right. to accomplish what you promised. Simple. <gasps> and coming from the islands that historically were the ones fighting. Listen. The islands fought, listen, the first island that fought to free us was Haiti. Haiti. And where is Haiti today? Exactly. Even most Caribbean countries who look at Haiti in disgust because they don't see themselves as standing with them, brother, the first nation to fight for free us. And you ask yourself, why is Haiti suffering so much? And why are my Haitians brothers under so much pressure? You know why? Because they stand up against the giant who they should have bowed to and they refuse. Right. And everyone wants them to bow. Haiti, do not bow. Keep standing up. We stand with you. Yep. So what? Uh, um, let's talk about penthouse records for a second. What you want to talk about? One hundred percent wild crafted sea moss from nature by natives. Why pay more? The all investigation and the findings about the wrong stone in Soka. Four lap tested. All four laps said that the stones cannot be used. It's wrong river stone. Stones. It's river stone. Yeah, Argal stone. Which stone, whichever one can be used. 